Hi guys, it's Amanda from Rustic.Furniture. Welcome to the second tutorial that I'm going to be doing. Uh, today's tutorial is a paint and stain effect, much like the first one, a couple of different colours used. And we're going to be doing it on an actual piece of furniture. So we're going to be changing this little side table into... So let's start with the materials that we're going to use for this project. We're going to use two oil-based stains. Uh, these are both the Mimwax brand. One is Dark Walnut and the other is Classic Grey. We're going to use a latex off-white paint and we're also going to use a uh, latex paint and water dilution. Now the quantities that it needs to be diluted to, you need to take one cup of water to one and a half tablespoons of the paint mix it in together and really you kind of need it the consistency of half and half cream the next thing we're going to use is a couple of brushes to apply the stain and then we're going to need a brush um, to apply the paint and the diluted paint mix I'll go over what kind of brush you need for the paint but the ones for applying the stain is any old brush will do Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to get our classic grey, dip the brush in it, and this is a technique I like to call putting it on like a three-year-old. Um, you are literally just going to blob this stuff anywhere. Uh, random spots, you can see what I'm doing here, there's gaps. Um, this is not a uniform finish. With that still wet, we're going to take a brush, dab it into the dark walnut, and we're going to fill in any of the gaps that you see there. So basically anywhere on this wood that doesn't have um, any of the grey stain, we're just going to fill in with the dark walnut. Now when we've got everything pretty covered and looking uh, like tortoiseshell actually, take one of your clean rags and you are literally going to blend these two colours in together. Now you're not going to end up with a big mushy old colour because where the stain takes um, originally when you put it on that's where it's going to stay. So the brown's going to stay where the brown is, the grey's going to stay where the grey is. So I'll just show you this again really quickly. So, um, yeah, three-year-old stain technique, slap on some grey. Get some of the walnut, fill in any gaps that we didn't use with the grey. get your cloth and just blend it all in together. There was a bit that didn't take there so I just dobbed some grey in there. We're going to cover the whole project in this finish so we're going to do uh, get all that done first. Now next we're going to take our diluted paint mix and you can see how that's running off the brush there. And that's what I was going to tell you about was this brush I'm using for this. This is literally one of those really really cheap um, useless brushes that probably cost you about a dollar um, and the reason that this is good for this kind of finish is because the bristles are pretty separate so you can see here me putting the um, the dilute paint finish on it's kind of got a, a comb like effect to it and that's really really good this is what we want for this because we want the paint to take in some parts and not in others so I'm going to brush it all over um, and then I'm going to uh, take one of the rags and blend this in. Now, this dilute paint effect has um, has the effect of actually drying out what's underneath pretty darn quick. Um, so you're going to need to work in small areas doing this. So you can see I'm doing uh, like one leg or a leg and a half um, and then blending that in going over some areas there that didn't take 
you can see what this is doing as well it's muting down the shade of the stain that's uh, underneath and that's what we want um, when wood ages and, and weathers and the sun bleaches it it gets lighter so this is what this um, whitewash effect is um, is doing to the stain So I'm quickly going to show you this process again, but just on the tabletop. I'm going to dip the brush into the whitewash mixture, dab off any excess on a cloth, get a clean cloth, and then blend it in as you can see I'm doing here. Always go in the direction of the grain. And blend as you go. Once this is all complete, we're going to do a dry brush effect now. This is what's going to give the effect of all those um, the, the weathered ridges on the wood. So you're going to take that same brush, dip it gently into the latex paint, dab off any excess, and brush really, really lightly straight over the top. Now some people have said, oh, you know, I'm not sure that, or I wasn't sure if you could do this in one process without letting things dry in between. But what the whitewash effect had done is, um, is in effect dried the oil finish that was underneath. So this is perfectly fine to go over. So you can see what I'm doing here. Knocking off any excess. And then lightly dragging it across. And I... I do this a few times because I want to build up color in some areas and not in others. Um, people say to me, well, how much paint do I get on my brush? Now, if you've ever made a stencil and uh, stenciled a picture, I'd say that's the amount of uh, paint that you want on the brush. So you're going to see there, dip it in gently, knock off any excess and then go in the direction of the green really really gently I'm hardly touching this board at all but just enough to get some paint on and then what I'm doing with the cloth here is just using it to take off any really harsh edges um, there's going to be some parts that look a bit nasty we're going to deal with those at the end with the with a bit of sandpaper you can see that bit on the right there that doesn't look very good at the minute but yeah we're going to smooth that out later there we go just getting the final pieces on the uh, side blending it in as we go and then here I'm just going around the whole thing um, looking if there's uh, any areas that might need a bit more white. The more white dry brushing you do, um, the better the effect is, although you, you need to be careful not to do too much. Now I remember when I said earlier that we were going to sort out any nasty pieces. What I've got here is a piece of 60 grit sandpaper and I'm going over anything that looks too harsh or too stark, just blending it in. Once you're happy with the final effect, that's it. Everything's done. Just something to remember, you do need to let this dry for 24 hours before you put a clear coat on. So there we go. That's how we achieve a weathered barn wood finish on a piece of furniture. I'm Amanda, and this has been a tutorial on behalf of Rustic Duck Furniture. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.